Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to continue our look at some of the changes to Mac OS High Sierra and to the Server 5.4 version. Now, as we've been talking in this series, there have been some changes that have taken some of the services that were only available in Mac OS Server and have moved them over to the main OS. And so in our previous screencasts, we covered things like the caching service and, uh, and some of that sort of thing and Time Machine. And this week, we're going to take a look at file sharing. Now, now, file sharing has always been available inside of Mac OS in the System Preferences area of the Sharing uh, tab. But in Mac OS Server, we had a lot more features that we could implement and things that we could do with file sharing inside the server app itself. But now, with Mac OS High Sierra, those features have moved into the main OS itself, and so they're no longer fully available in the server app. And as you'll see in a minute, I'm saying fully available because some of those things are still available in the server application, and we'll talk about the overlap between those things here uh, as we go through the screencast. So I'm here in the server application, and as you can see, file sharing is gone. Uh, it's not a service in the sidebar anymore. And if I just put that down, that's just because it's in System Preferences now. So if I launch System Preferences, I want to come into the Sharing tab here. And as you can see, there's file sharing right here. Uh, to turn the service on, I just hit the checkbox right here. And you'll notice that it defaults to SMB as the file sharing protocol. Now, that's because AFP, which is Apple's uh, file sharing proto protocol, is being deprecated. And that's because SMB allows encrypted connections and a few other things. So those aren't there. And for Apple's new uh, APFS file system, uh, that will no longer use the um, Apple file sharing protocol. Okay, so that's going to go away. So just wanted to let you know we're still in a crossover state where both of those are available. Available, but uh, that gives you an idea of how that works. So here we are inside, like I said, the file sharing area. And you'll notice I've got my shared folders over here that I can add, and I've got my users over here with different access. Now, a couple of things as we get started. So let me just go ahead and come in here, and I'm just going to remove uh, this here because I like to start with, with a clean slate here in terms of adding shares. Uh, so let's go through this. First, we have our options right here. And you'll notice that I have the choice to share files and folders using SMB. And I have the option to use uh, share files and folders using, using AFP. So I still have this AFP option uh, for uh, older systems if I really want to do that. So I can turn that on if I want. Now we also have this Windows file sharing over here where I can share um, files with some Windows uh, computers. Now if I'm using Open Directory, this really isn't necessary. Uh, because I'll be using Open Directory as the login and that sort of thing. But if I'm not using Open Directory, then I may want to come in here and check off, uh, you know, my computer and all that kind of stuff. You can see it's already uh, put the calendar server with a checkbox there so it can share with Windows accounts. So this is where you'd come in and kind of configure overall how you want to do the file sharing. Let's just say done. Now, to add a file share, I just want to come over here and hit the plus. And so I get this uh, ability to search for what, uh, what files or folders I want to share. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and leave my documents folder there. I'm going to add that to share it. And you can see the documents folder gets added right here. And then over to the side, I've got my basic users. I've got my uh, administrator right here or whatever my main uh, account is. And then I've got everyone. Uh, here as well, and I, they have no access. So right now, only one person has access to this particular file share. Now, to get to more options, if I wanted to do some more tweaking with this, if I just uh, control click on the folder there, you'll notice I get a number of different options. I can show in the finder if I want to do that, and that'll take me, if I just click on this, you'll see it'll take me right to the finder where that folder is located. I'll just come back in here and control click again. I can apply permissions to enclosed items. So what that means is that any permissions that I set up here within the sharing tab here for file sharing, I can uh, choose to apply to any other folder or document that's inside this particular folder or share. So I can do that here. I also have get info. If I just click on get info, I get the get info window brought up here. And that gives me information about this folder, including down here, I can also work with uh, setting up the different permissions for my file shares. Now to do that, I would have to unlock uh, this right here, and then that would open this up for me to do these changes in here. And I've got the same kind of things, right? I can apply to the enc enclosed items or I can revert changes here. So I can actually do some of the file sharing work right in the Get Info uh, area uh, by either clicking here or just Command-I will get me in there as well. Let me just close that window down and come back over here. 
and let's control click again. Now I also have some advanced options and so if I just click on advanced options here I get this drop down which allows me to choose how I want this folder shared. I can share it with SMB, AFP or both SMB and AFP. So it's up to you on how you want to do that. If you have some legacy systems you might want to make sure you include AFP on there. Um, but if not, you might want to just start that whole conversion over to SMB if you want to uh, get used to the future of where this is going, as well as be able to encrypt. And so as you can see down here, I can choose to allow guest users or not, and then I can say only allow SMB con uh, encrypted connections so that that will be encrypted. Uh, that folder will be encrypted and any of the things back and forth will be shared. And then as I showed you earlier in the Time Machine video that I can choose to share a particular folder as a Time Machine destination and then choose how to limit the backups and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to leave this the way it is for right now and just say cancel. Now I can also do some work over here and so when I come over to my users if I just control click on my users I have the same types of things right where I can show in finder get permissions it's it's basically the same menu that I have over here and as you can see it'll take me to the same places and get me to the information I want so I can do it on the user or on the documents it's up to it's up to you how you want to do that now in here I've got my basic uh, read and write privileges right where I can read a file and write to it I can either do that or read only where I can only read the file but I can't write to it or write only which works kind of like a Dropbox where I can't see what's in the folder but I can only put stuff into it. So it's kind of like I drop it in the folder but that's all I see is the folder itself to drop files into. So I can set up those permissions there. Uh, to add somebody new I just come down here and hit the plus and then it allows me to search through my different users and I can select a user here let's say like administrators and say OK and then from there I can choose what level access I want administrators to have for this particular folder. So that gives you an overview of how this works inside of the sharing application. Again, um, it's got uh, all of the options built into here pretty much, uh, but it doesn't have the fine-tuned granularity that we had in server itself. Now luckily, uh, a lot of those options are still available. Now to get access to those more advanced settings, let me just come down here and pull up the server application again. And so here we are inside of server and you can see I'm on the server tab itself over here. If I just come across to the storage tab, you'll see that I have information on my drive there. In fact, let me just change how we view this. So what I would do is just drill into where the share is. And so if I just come in here, there's my documents folder right there. And so that's where the share is located. Now, in order for me to make changes to these uh, permissions, I would just come down here to the gear icon and you can see I have a number of options. I can choose to add a new folder inside this folder to edit permissions or to propagate permissions. So editing permissions would allow me to edit the specifics. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. And then propagating permissions is the basically allows me to take whatever permissions I set and make sure that they go all the way through any folders or documents that are inside the share or inside, in our case, the documents folder. So let's just go ahead and say edit permissions. And so I get this nice drop down and already you can see that I have a few more options than I had over in system preferences. You can see I've got a staff option here and others option which is a more global option. You can see there's my uh, user that was in there, there's the administrators and everyone else right here as well. I get the same access to permissions, right? I can do read and write, read only, write only. I do have the option to say none if I wanted to keep this particular user present. Maybe I don't want any um, access there. I'd be very careful how you use this uh, none option however it, because if you set that for let's say your main local uh, account uh, it's going to lock you out of file shares or out of whatever documents folder whatever it is you're sharing so we have a lot of caution here in terms of making those kind of changes uh, but you can see I have those options there with this drop down just like I have over in system preferences but I have an, some additional things that I can do as well if I just click the little triangle here you notice I have more uh, granularity in how I want to set up my particular uh, rules here for access. You can see I've got an administration, read, write, and inheritance access in here. And so these are called ACLs and this allows me to make particular changes. If I just click down here you see I can for administrators I can allow them to change permissions or change owners. If that's, this isn't checked then that can't be done. Uh, for read I can have uh, them change read attributes, extended attributes, uh, list folder contents to read data, traverse the folder or execute a file and then read permissions. For write, I can write attributes, extended attributes, create files, create folder and delete. 
And then right here for inheritance, I can apply to this folder, child folders, apply to child files, apply to all descendants. And so this is nice if I just want to make changes at a top level that apply to everything inside the actual folder, then I can set this up to allow me to be able to do that when I make those particular changes. And you can see I've got that here for administrators as well uh, to add the same types of things inside of here. Let me just come up here and close this down. So as you can see, it gives me a lot more fine control over how to do file sharing. And I've gone into detail in this in the past uh, in a screencast I did for Sierra where I walked through all of the ACLs and how all of that worked. You might want to refer to that one uh, if you want to understand what each of those things mean. And I'll put a link here so that you can get at that. I'll probably end up redoing some of this stuff for High Sierra Server as well, though uh, a lot of things haven't changed. They're pretty close uh, to where they were before. Um, but again, I, I usually go through those series. But just wanted to allow you to have access to that early if you want uh, inside of here. Now, once I've made particular changes to a folder, if I just select this, you'll notice that I've got the option here to sort access controls canonically, and I can remove inherited entries or make inherited entries explicit. And so, again, that would be based on whatever I'm putting in here for a user or a group if I'm making a change to this particular share, which I'm not. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel here. Now, when I come out here, if I've made changes, this is where I would come in here and say propagate uh, permissions. And once I do that, I get this drop down that says select the information I want to propagate to whatever is inside that share, right? Whatever is below it in the tree. So I can change, I can propagate an owner name, a group name, owner group, or other permissions. And then the access control list, which would have been all those fine tuned changes that I did uh, when I was inside the different users there to select what I wanted to do. And so I could propagate that and then that would change the permissions for everything underneath it to match. Let me go ahead and cancel. So that gives you an idea of how file sharing works. As you can see, most of it has been integrated into Mac OS, uh, High Sierra, but there are still some things in server that give more fine grained control so that you can go in and make your changes. One of the things I would suggest is to go ahead and go into the file sharing in system preferences, for instance, right here. I'd set up your file sharing. I'd go in and put whatever shares, shared folders you want in here. I wouldn't worry about your users and all that stuff. Just put your shared folders in here. Go through uh, next with the options. Maybe you want to do the advanced options to choose how you want these to work uh, inside of there. You can also do some of the options here and get those set ahead of time. And then what I would do is then I would come back into the server application and inside the storage tab here is where I would set up the actual permissions because I've got more of that fine grain control. So that would just be an easier way to do it. So that's how I'd use those two things together. Again, uh, not particularly convenient in the sense that you got to use two applications to get the level of control you had before. But if you think about it, you used to have to come over here to file sharing and then back into the storage tab to do this level of detail change anyway. So it's just two windows instead of one, but you're still having to flip back and forth. So that's how that would work. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.